thank you. And good morning. Um, this, this is the project that will get you in some trade magazine for public works on the picture, right, on the, on the cover. Thank you. Uh, feels good to be here. Um, Don Elwood, Director of Transportation Engineering Design. Uh, topic for today is nickel ball. No action items needed. It's just an update of the project and where we're at. Um, today I'll cover project milestones, scope, schedule, and budget. Those are pretty standard items. I want to review the project principles, um, go through construction with photos, uh, talk about our communications, then looking ahead into, this, into uh, 2017. I think it's good to review how we got to where we are today. And uh, 2012 and 13, we established a implementation committee and got the design going. In June of 2014, we had the concept design approved, and that's when we got the state grant. In May of 2015, the special assessments were approved, and then I had a fully funded project. We told the utilities to go. In December of 2015, I had a single bid and could not move forward. And by May of 2016, we got a redesign done, got the bids out, and awarded a contract to proceed. In June of 2016, we started the roadway project for Nickel Mall. Uh, generally, the scope, uh, total redesign and reconstruction, building face to building face, from Grant to Washington. We're taking out the slippery granite pavers and sidewalks, the roadway, the lights, signals, bus shelters, everything's coming out. Along with that, most of the utilities are being upgraded along with the project, the underground utilities. What we're putting back, a new pedestrian clear walk zone, more green and trees uh, with plantings, a new elegant lighting system will go in. To, uh, the, the old lighting was low, shined in your eyes, uh, created a lot of glare. The new lighting is very high, more uniform lighting is going in. And raised intersections, um, making pedestrians a priority and where the roadway comes up to the sidewalk level, so it's straight across for the pedestrians. And 11th Avenue is a good example. That intersection is nearly complete except for the signals going in. If people want to see what that's going to look like, that's in place right now. Schedule for the project, there's a little red dot that shows where we're at. This is a schedule going back to 2013, but essentially the utility work began in 2015. The main roadway work is 16 and 17. And we're on track for substantial completion by the end of 2017. Budget, uh, it's a $50 million project. There's $25 million in state grant and city funds. There's $25 million in private investment through special assessments. The project is currently on budget, and it's tracking to stay on budget as of right now. Some guiding principles for the project. It's a place for people. It's pedestrian friendly. It's green. It's year-round use. And we're trying to activate all 12 blocks. It's elegant and durable. It has an urban design. And it has cost-effective operation and maintenance for what we're putting in out there. Present progress and conditions. There's three main parts to this Nicollet Mall project. I have an underground component, I have an at-ground component, and I have an above-ground component. I really have a three-dimensional project going on on Nicollet Mall. Um, a large portion of what we do on Nicollet Mall will not be seen by the public. And when we're done, they won't even know what happened. It's all going on underground or right below the sidewalk. And it's a very significant amount of work to get that done. For the most part, the surface work out there is complete from Grant to 11th, as well as the west side up to 10th, and then there's a portion at the IDS building that's, that's completed. It's ready for trees and lights. I have some construction photos. This is, a, this is our stenciling process that we've talked about. So in the upper left-hand corner are Metal stencils, there's about 32, there's three different designs, and then there are different designs and there are different intensities of elements in these stencils. And so what happens is, on the, on the right side of the screen, um, 
after the concrete is placed and sets up, the stencils are placed down on top of that concrete. And then there's a high pressure etching process that goes on. And the end result is that lower left. And that's the look and the texture you get to the concrete sidewalk that's out there. So on this photo on the left-hand side is the computer graphics we were showing through the design. And on the right-hand side, that's what we have. And they're very close, um, very close to what we said we'd do. Um, there's different intensities um, of the pattern. Some are closer, some are farther apart. And so what we showed, what we have. In the groves area, similarly on the left, what we were showing and on the right side, what we have today. These are in place. Um, that, that photo there on the right, I think, is near PV. And then in the center portion near the IDS, we have the um, that pattern, what we sh what we were showing, and what we ended up with. Things that go in at ground or just under the sidewalk, we have extensive irrigation going in for the planting areas and the trees. And so in the lower left, um, we have tree baskets. That indicates where we're putting the trees. It kind of, it's kind of a placeholder, reserves a spot for the trees. Then the irrigation system goes in. On the upper right, it all connects into a main controller box that will run the irrigation system for the trees and the plantings. Once all that gets put down, and then I'm not going to say there's miles of irrigation because I, I don't know the exact fact, but there's a lot of irrigation that's going in. It's all covered up with the concrete. So I have to get all that in place. Then that concrete goes down. It's all ready to go for the trees to come in. We are doing some uh, complex form work with the concrete. Um, this is more than just putting in a standard sidewalk. So in the upper left, we have the forms are being were put in for the concrete. In the lower left, that's what it looks like after that concrete pour goes in. But because we're doing multiple colors, I have I can't do it all at once. So in the upper right-hand corner is the different color and texture concrete that then fits into the puzzle piece on the uh, sidewalk grove area. And then the lower um, right-hand side. The wood forms that are in, that's what's holding the concrete back for the future tree locations. And it all comes together um, in multiple stages. Raised intersections. Um, another feature for the mall on the left-hand side, this is what we were showing earlier on in the project during the concept. Right-hand side, this is what we have today at 11th near PV. The crosswalks are a different color. Uh, to indicate where the pedestrian should go. And in order to put this in, it, it goes in in multiple phases. You have to pour the different colors at different times. I have to keep traffic open for vehicles and pedestrians as well. So the, the construction of the intersection is very complex, half at a time, keep everything open and, and get the trucks in there at the same time. But when we're done, that lower right-hand corner gives you a good perspective looking at PV, how that sidewalk matches right in at that intersection and what that's going to look and feel like for the pedestrian experience. Reading room. This is future installation of items. The upper uh, left-hand corner is the concept of the reading room. Lower left is the foundation is poured for that bench work that's in place right now. And in the upper right, we brought in the pieces for that bench. It goes together like a puzzle. And on top of that are wood slats that are being uh, manufactured right now. So that will go in to the mall um, as soon as that wood's ready to go. The groves. Um, I really like this picture on the right hand side from the Skyway. It gives me a great perspective of what this is going to look like. So this is looking down from the Skyway um, left hand side is the local and barrio and the pedestrian through zone is right in front of the buildings there so that's about a 10 foot pedestrian walk zone 
And out beyond that are these grove areas. We have the holes ready for the trees, and it really starts to give a good sense for how big of a space we're talking out about out there for programming and pedestrians in use. The future roadway is to the right of the groves. Um, it'll be that narrow band, and then there'll be more sidewalk um, on the far side towards the newsroom. But I like this perspective. It, it really gives me a sense for, and gives us a sense for, what we're really going to be putting out there when we're done and uh, how much space we have to work with. Uh, within the last couple of weeks, the armature, we put in a por portion of the armature, which is part of the light walk. So on the upper left-hand side is this two-block light walk, we're calling it. It's a series of mirrored louvers up above, and the uh, there's illumination in there as well. So on the right-hand side, we installed this about, uh, I'm guessing, two weeks ago, this uh, prototype or test piece, just to make sure we had it all figured out. Lights turned on. In this case, they're red. Uh, in that photo, they're red, but they're programmable. They are they change colors. Um, they run through the cycle. So this will be uh, in that photo where the people are standing. That's going to be sidewalk, and the roadway in that photo is off to the far right. And so we got this installed, and we're moving ahead to install the two blocks of this light walk. That is a signature feature for Nickel Mall. And that's in place right now. It's at 7th and Nicollet. If you go out there, you'll see it. There's some protective wood around there, uh, around the, the base. But you can see it up above and see what it's going to look like, what the mirrors are going to look like, um, and get a sense for what's, what's this corridor going to be. Furniture. Deliveries in progress with the furniture. And we have some on site right now, uh, not on the Nickel Mall site, but in, in a uh, secure storage area. Complexities of delivery. Um, the at-ground complexities for this project um, are significant. Um, we're providing a 10-foot clear path through the corridor, along the corridor. I'm also maintaining access across the corridor at all the side streets and maintain access to all the businesses at all times uh, during the project. Uh, a challenge, we, we have a solution for these challenges, but it is a challenge to keep a lot of people going through the corridor, and that's the good news. We're open for business. We're keeping people moving through the corridor. We have been creative, um, built plywood sidewalks and a bridge to get people in restaurants or businesses to make, make it accessible, as well as the pedestrian fencing, which you see there. We have over uh, two miles of pedestrian fencing on this project to keep pedestrians um, safe. Um, that's a key piece. We have temporary signs. We have detours, building temporary sidewalks as needed. We're building bridges as needed. We also have temporary cross crosswalks temporary signals, and temporary pedestrian level lighting. I got to make sure it stays lit. I got to make sure I still have crosswalks, but I have to take all the old stuff out, take it offline. So significant effort to make this uh, passable, usable for pedestrians. The other piece that uh, many folks don't see is the underground work. And the mall is full. It is full of utilities underneath. There's not a lot of room left, and this is in three dimensions. Coordination of the underground work has been significant. It impacts along the mall and also all the crossing side streets. Upgrades were needed now so we can provide service needed for the future. This is a key piece of the overall Nicollet Mall project. I needed to keep existing facilities operational during the move because as we we, we are unable to take everything offline, so we have to build new before we can take out the old. And there's not a lot of room in the corridor. I think other projects we come into, we can open up the road and open everything up and all the utilities come in. But this is a good photo to show the limited space we have to work in. Uh, this is a utility trench. There's utilities on both sides of this and below this that they are working around to put this in. I have an operational sidewalk cafe on the sidewalk on the right and another one on the left. 
They only have enough room for one truck to get down that street while we do work on this corridor. It's a very tight, very constrained corridor, and there's just not a lot of room. So this takes time, and it's significant effort. Communications. A key piece to our project has been communications. And we have web pages um, for the project, but we also hold weekly construction meetings. And this is a, is a key piece for our project team and the businesses right on the corridor. Every week we get together, we talk about the general conditions on the project. We talk about what's happening this week, what we got done last week. And it's important for the, the project team and the businesses to understand some of the challenges we run into, some of the challenges they run into, events that they have, and how to make it all work. Uh, at this meeting, we talk these issues through and these items through. Um, we talk about any updates and accomplishments as well. So this goes on every week during construction. We also send this out in an email blast format to tell anybody who's signed up where we're at, where we're, where we're at this week, where we're going to next week. There's also been uh, media attention on this project, as well as one-on-one -on -one individual meetings, where we will meet with individual property owners to figure out how do I build a bridge to get people into your business. Our schedule sometimes gets down to the exact hour. Can you not do that work till after 2 in the afternoon? And we try to accommodate businesses and what they need. We do as much as we tend to communicate so that these businesses can plan what they need to do for their work as well. Looking ahead, in April, we're going to pick up right where we left off. And work will progress a little, little differently than it did last year. The land use changes as I move north a little bit. I would anticipate that every block will have intense operational activity on it in 2017. In June, roughly the June time frame, that's when trees begin to come online from south to north. They'll come in in phases or waves. And in July, the lights, the, the light poles start coming in in that same fashion from south to north. I'd like to thank the businesses out here. The businesses have been great to work with. Um, that's a key piece for us. They've asked good questions. They've been very professional through this project for us so far, and they've been very helpful. I'd also like to thank Rick Kreiser and Peter Brown. I, I get to talk about it. He really does it. So I get to stand up here and talk about it, but Rick Kreiser and Peter Brown are the guys that are really making it happen, and uh, I thank both of them. That concludes my presentation, and if there's any questions, I'm here to, here to answer. Any questions for the presentation for staff? Um, seeing none, just a comment on the spectacular work that's happened and will be happening. I think it will all be a little more visible and legible to the general public, so this was a timely update. Um, and with that, I believe we'll just receive and file the update before us, and I don't think we have to take action to do so. Um, it is thereby received and filed. That's the last item on our agenda, and we are adjourned.